Hello and welcome to I actually don't know what I'm gonna call this yet. But this is this is G mod or Gary's mod, or as I like to call it Gmod. I don't, but I should. I should start calling it that. And this is a game built essentially around being modded. Like I can't think of a game that has more mods than this game. And I love it to bits. I put a lot of hours into it. Well, playing around with one thing, because of course the mine community, of course, is so vast. There's lots of different things, lots of different mods, different maps, different uh, vehicles, different player models. I mean, what's my player model at the moment? It is a uh, Clone Wars Plo Koon. And you can see here, I have quite a few uh, top two ones. Because I should probably say this. I mean, you might have kind of guessed it from the TARDIS Minecraft tour. I do quite like Doctor Who. I do. I've been watching it since I was about five. I've been collecting the Doc 2 sets, the B&M ones, since they came out back in 2016, 2017, whenever, whenever that was. I love it to bits. I do. I seriously do. The Doc 2 community and, and Gmail come together in a great way with a collection of mods that they do. And uh, you know them. You love them. They're Tarses. I didn't know I was that close. There we go. Here are, I believe these are ones you can get at the moment. I'm not going to look at all of them. I'm going to look at just the ones that are based on the TV show. And we can have a bit of a nose around them, and I can be quite long and witchery. And this video is going to be very long and witchery, and I think we're going to have a lot of fun. Well, I am just literally looking at TARDIS models and going, oh, look how accurate and interesting these are. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's get into it. These are all the first Doctor TARDISes that this game has. Well, these three parents are the same interior, but they have these different exterior models. So we have, this is the original, kind of traditional First Doctor 1963 TARDIS. They've seen an earthly child and up to us. How it changes? I think it's around... I think this is the model they have for the first three series of the show. Um, this is the one, if you've seen the kind of little docudrama, whatever you want to call it, Adventure in Space and Time, this is the prop they use for that. And this is the task prop they use in the episode The Massacre, or The Massacre of St. Bartholomew's Eve. Essentially, it's it's just quite a shoddy prop. <laughs> See, the, 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 the back's cardboard, the sides are a different colour, and the windows are wrong, the windows are tattooed, it's held up with bits of wood. It's a bit of a mess. And this is the TARDIS used by David Bradley in Twice Upon a Time. This is the TARDIS they have in that episode. So let's have a look inside the first Doctor's TARDIS. I've got rid of the other ones because when you have too many models, too many TARDISes open, all the entities, they get a bit funny with each other. So the first thing you'll notice is it's actually bigger on the inside. Look at that. Click on it. So you have all the different uh, versions. You've got the Mask of Tires ones and the Space and Time ones. You can have a like a full white clean version, like the Twice Bar Time Tires and all that stuff. You can have different doors. So classic doors. So I'll keep you sure what... So that was double doors. You have the police box doors, and you have the interior doors that have the round doors on. I'm doing movements with my hands, but you can't see that. So if I click, I want classic doors. This is kind of what actually what this task was like. Uh, back in the day also you can click on this and you can have things so if you don't want if you want uh the kind of fake roof with the stage lights you can have the different you can have the tt capsule the so like what you have in hellbent like this one down here you cannot have the fake 2d wall you can have a proper 3d wall there's lots of customization within the game itself for tweaking tasks in game and also if you hold down c and click on you can animate the change the mold you can change the lamp so you can have like more boxy lamp or most of them all have a snowy version. So it's all covered in snow. Look at all that. Ooh, snowy. So if you open it now, as you can see, it's now like that. So th th this is what the prop they used to do with the prop back in the day, because of course it was all in the studio. So if this was like, say, an earthly child, this would all be just the sandy wasteland of 100,000 BC. Stuff. As you can see, you've got the uh, the fake card wall. So yeah. All right. Let's give you a quick tour. Let's give you a quick tour of the actual TARDIS itself. So we have uh, all these little props and things that the Doctor's collected over the years. We have this weird sphere thing and this pillar. If you've if you've played 1.12 Dark Mod, you'll recognise that and you recognise this. And I guess also the chair and yeah, the chair. You can actually sit in the chairs, so you can have Plo Koon sit in the TARDIS. It's an interesting spectacle that is. Uh, that's Clone Wars Plo Koon, uh, by the way, not uh, Attack of the Clones Plo Koon. There is another one you can have, and it's like the proper kind of live action Plo Koon, which is quite cool. Uh, as you can see, we have the uh, fake blow-up roundels because they didn't have the budget for all the walls, so they had to have ones made of card because, yes. Um, this is when you see the tires. I think it's an earthly child. I think also Edge of Destruction is when you see the tires in its like biggest size. If you watch, like say, like the Daleks or some other stories, the room gets quite small. I think there are other ones where it's quite big, like in uh, the web, 
uh, the web planet and stuff. There are other few stories, but this is, I think this is mainly based off of an earthly child. That's when you see it the most in this kind of grand scale. Also, the roof, as you can see, it's a proper roof. You can have it, like I said, you can have it with the... Uh, you can look up and it's like it's all held up by strings and you can see like stage lights and stuff in the background. Adds like a little bit to the immersion, which is nice. Um, or I guess this helps with the immersion of making it not a set, but I haven't put that there because it's sort it. So you've got the controls, all the controls you can see, a lot of them all do work. Uh, we have these things, I don't know what they are really, they're just weird. And at the back we have the fault locator, don't think I need to actually do anything. And if we go, you've got the ceiling heads, you've got the scanner at the back there as well. And if we go through this door, we've got the side room you see in the Daleks. So it's got the food machine. You can press buttons on it. You've got these lounges, that one that soothes the tax. And the structures you keep stabbing randomly. And you've got a door that doesn't open. So there's a lot in there. There's a lot, a lot of little details um, for the nerds. Uh, I think there actually is a switch here. Which switch is it? Is it this one? Yes, door switch. And it closes the doors. Lovely animation. Um, great thing is also... The uh, the time rotor rotates. Oh, it's not, it's not called cool, a time rotor, is it? It's actually called a time rotor. There's like the nickname. I think is in the time rotor actually a, a name of the of a circuit or a system on the controls. And this is called the pill. I can't remember what this is called, really. But everyone calls it the time rotor because sod it. As you can see, it rotates. It actually did do it, do that in the show. But I think after like the first like series or two, it broke, and they just never fixed it. Which shame because none ever really, none ever really did it before. No, no other time. I love this time rotor. It's so I call it again. But it's just because all the others were just like a stick of color, like blue or green or red, or whatever, or purple, with just some LEDs in it flashing around. But this was like a more of a kind of. It's a weirder kind of. I mean, it's obviously just like a what was it? Like a, it's like a colander and some other random bits just stuck on. But it just looks a bit more. In, it's not just like a, a lot of flashy lights. It's something a bit more different that you don't really get in tires, any tires console, like all the other ones are, like they're just tubes and lights. Which is not a bad thing, but this is something a bit different. And you've got, look look at all the controls, which every control on this panel does not apart from, say, that. Twice part of time, TARDIS. So, I love the doors are staggered on the road. Go through. So, as you see, it's, it's, oh no, there you go. I think there's a switch that turns that off. Brandy, oh yeah, oh, oh, enable Brandy, hell yeah. Uh, roof option. Oh, so, see, look. Now it's, look, oh, look, it's all the stage lamps. What? I swear one of these stops the thingy from opening. Ah, oh, which one is it? That turns the TARDIS off. What's the button? Door controls? Ah, automatic doors disabled. There we go. Okay, so now they don't shut on their own. So I can open them and they won't shut. I love that noise. This is great noise. Uh, so, yeah. So, this is from the 2017 Christmas special. Uh, I, don't, I haven't actually seen it since it came out, I think. So, this is quite new to me. So you've got, um, again, you've got the pillars, but with a lot of detail. You've got the chair again. You've got the clock. Did I, sh I didn't show you the clock in the other one. But there's the clock. It's so nicely detailed. Look at that. Oh. Uh, you got this thing. Again, but a different rendition. I look at these weird lights on the walls. Uh, you've got the kind of uh, tenant style uh, fault scanner. This is, I guess this is a mix of the Hartnell tires and I guess it veteran space and time. Not veteran space, Hellbent TARDIS. Because I guess that's what the console is. Because of course it wasn't actually white, it was blue. And we have this thing. Speak of what we saw there. And also, as you can see from Brandy, if you open this cabinet, it's got the little Brandy cupboard. Which doesn't always get the right angle. You have to crouch and look at it like this. Mmm, Brandy. Is that, is that actually labelled TARDIS Brandy? I assume it's actually labelled like that in the show. But that'd be awesome. God. The Doctor opened his own white distillery. It'd be awesome. Time Lord Brandy. Uh, I also love the little noises these switches make. <laughs> They're just nice little noises. Oh, one other addition that this has, but the other Hartnell task hasn't got. If you open this panel, it's got the little control panels. If you saw Adventure in Space and Time, this is a little panel that's inside the TARDIS in the console where you turn the dial to make all the, the motor in this go off, which is a lovely little detail. And if I go to no clip, you can... Look at, look at the detail here. Look, oh, look at all the buttons. So this is the 1966 tower. So technically this is also Hartnell. So this is what you see in, like, say, the Tenth Planet, uh, Power of the Daleks, and all that sort of stuff. Um, as you can see, uh, the pull to open signs on the other side of the door. Uh, you can you can change that back if you wish, and you can make it battered for whatever reason. And you can see these are quite weird. You see the the signs different. I think the windows on there are a different color, and it's also on a caster wheels. Uh, there are a few other different exteriors you can have. 
There's also the uh, miniature exterior. This is probably what they used uh, for some like space shots back in the day. It's actually quite a nice exterior to be honest on its own. This one, which is the character options exterior. So if you collect the uh, TARDISes, the second Doctor TARDISes, this you'll notice is the one from A Bondable Snowman with the uh, door on the other side. And if I change it to that one, you've got the uh, War Games one, which is that really quite... Plus, this is more of a blue than the toy was, because so the toy is like almost black. It's really, really dark. So this is what you see. Again, this has got the classic doors, and this is the tons he has in the in Power of the Dalek. In Power of the Dalek, so you see it's very small, it's very cramped. But it's still got all the chairs and stuff. It's got the cabinets. The top one. Yeah, look, it's got his Sonics. Oh yeah, oh, I forgot the whole Sonic mod, isn't there? So that there's this, that's what the Sonics had. It was just a just a tin whistle. It's still got all the same controls. It still does all the same stuff. The other TARDIS does. Again. Look at that noise. That's the noise the Tysh used to make when it was in flight. Gives me a headache. There's also this one, which I believe is is the same console, but it's a slightly bigger room this time. It's a slightly bigger room. I don't know what episode this is in. It's not the war games. I'm pretty sure the war games are the biggest set. But this is a well, 67, so that's that's Trown's first full series. That's series five. Um, so that could be, I don't know what's in Series 5. <laughs> oh, I can't remember. What's in Series 5? I don't know. Uh, Tomb of the Cybermen? Crap, no. That actually could be. Oh, I don't know, I don't remember. Um, I'm not the great, I'm not the greatest on, like, 60. Any, anything, like, spearhead onwards, I, like, know everything. Not everything. I'm, I'm not that good. But, um, yeah, I'm a bit rusty with uh, bits of uh, Trout. I'm, I'm better with Trout than Hartnell. Now, we're onto the Pertwees. There's also an explosion here. <laughs> Who detonated in my city? Hello? This is the 1971 TARDIS, and I believe the mod says it's from... I believe they say Colony in Space. I think the plot is the TARDIS. The Time Wolves take it on a bit of a joyride, because the Master's doing something evil or something. I don't know. That's pretty much all that series is, is the Master doing stuff. So as you can see, it's it's quite detailed. You can tell also what's meant to be. You got the little um, you got the cabinet for the ch uh, chameleon circuit. What's it called? I remember it in a minute. Dematerialization circuit. There we are. Uh, what button changes it? Uh, oh, that's the that's the exterior door. That one. Look. So that, that, again, that was what the vortex looked like apparently back in 1971. That's what they thought the vortex looked like. Looks nothing like actually what. The vortex effect was for the title sequence, but it does look um, very interesting. And uh, we've got this wall, which I've got a clue what it does, but that's just, that is just a, that's just a picture. And as you can see from the exterior, it's again all the tiles were quite patchy up until say the like mid seventies. Apart from the, I guess the first one that you see, there's like a, another door at the back, with all these like bolts everywhere. They're a bit bit of a mess. So this is the nineteen seventy. Two TARDIS, and it's got a very similar problem to the 1951 TARDIS. All the bits are patchy. I mean, this is what it's meant to be. It's meant to look all patchy and weird. Well, let's see. Look how that side is. That side's different, and that side's all the sides are different. Um, so specifically, this is from. As you'll see when I go in, I love that noise of the door closing. Open the door. This is the TARDIS from. I remember in a minute. The time monster with the uh, with the uh, I think they're called the uh, dinner plate no the mixing bowl roundels and you've got the little scanner up there. Is well. I think I think you also see a very similar design in uh, Calls of Axos. I think you do as well. And you've got this side door which leads to the world's weirdest box. And you got a few artistic liberties have been done like with this bit and this would be where the cameras would be. So they've just put something here which is quite nice. So that fits the theme. I feel like this console. You've got the uh, uh, the TARDIS, the uh, Time Lord, uh, emergency stress beacon. You've got again the uh, dematerialization circuit. Ooh, time travel. Which I love these like little bits of writing everywhere. I love I love the noises. That mm, that's clicky. Uh, and I love all the levers are really quite oddly like done. So when you pull them, they all go to different like heights and lengths. Like they're all like not really put in properly, and uh, all these weird letters, which I'm guessing are meant to discount Gallifreyan, but that's actual Gallifreyan there. That's that genuine like that's like high Gallifreyan, they're all concentric circles. The great thing about this TARDIS is it's gone, but there is a colossal amount of Masters TARDISes because of course 
1972. No, actually, 1971 is the is the, essentially the series where the mass is in every episode, and also the few in 1972, and I guess also 1973 as well. And he, his ties has a working chameleon circuit. Like when you first see Inter of the Autons, it's a horse box for like a like a tr- essentially it's a car. Um, and in this you get a few ones. So you have got the computer exterior also from the Time Monster, and the door opens from the side. And you can see this is the opposite side of the uh, TARDIS. So you've got that. You've also got You've got the Axos Kiosk, which is the TARDIS this the exterior he has in, I think it's Thoughts of Axos, which to me is like kind of the original version of what the kind of basic TARDIS exterior was. It just opens like that. Mm, funky noise. And then you've also got, what's the other one? Double Column, which I'm guessing is meant to be... Is that Time Monster again? I'm guessing so, because it's Atlantis, isn't it? And you've also got Miniature Box, which I think is just... It's still... That's a TARDIS again, isn't it? So, ah, that's the one. That's from Spare from Space, so when the TARDIS lands and Pertwee falls out. This is the prop they use for the materialization shot. So this is the 1973 TARDIS. And you can see from the outside, it's pretty much the same. But this is probably my favourite TARDIS interior. And this is from... It's a bit of a mountain in the wall. But this is from... Uh, it's mainly the Three Doctors. So it's the bigger room, the nice round doors and the little TV. But it's also got a mountain in it still. Hang on. There we go. I've gotten rid of the mountain. It's got a few other bits, mainly from also Planet of the Daleks. So it's got the uh, cabinet thing that I love. I just, I just really love this thing. It's got the bed that comes out. In here you've got the uh, oxygen canisters that he has. The little dials don't move, that's cool. And you've also got a little slight screwdriver dispenser. And a lamp from, uh, I don't know, it must be the Pixar lamp's older brother. And then through here, it's just some rooms. I, th- of course, this isn't in the show. I don't know, I think this is a bit of artistic liberty. I don't know. There's also this room with these massive circles on the walls. I don't know, again, I don't know what this is from. But it's here if you know it. Basically, the console is slightly different as well. Uh, oh, let, me, let me close the doors up quick. Where's the door switch? How's that meant to be flicking? All right. Okay, there's an interior door. And the main doors. There you go. I think that's the door lock. Yeah, there's a bit more high color frame there. And of course you've got the uh, the switch. But look, the light goes off like it does in Three Doctors when he pulls the switch. Also, look how scuffed sounding the flight noise is. I mean, that's fine. But once you get into the... Where's the button for it? Oh, here's one. It's all echoey and weird. Stop flying. Open the doors. Are we sideways? Oh, no, we're not. God, I'm a great TARDIS pilot. See, don't bother Dr. Moans. It's, it's dead easy. So these are the three fourth Doctor TARDISes. You have the 1975 one from series uh, 12 and 13. Or I guess mini series 13. You've got the... This is meant to be the 1976. This is the secretary console from uh, series 14. And this is the in, in, this is the TARDIS that they have in series 15 to 17. So with uh, the second Leela series and the two Romana series. So this is actually one of the first TARDISes they made as a mod. This is, of course, this isn't it, but they based it off this TARDIS. And they, this is a, a newer one that only came out not too long ago. Um, and it's, I think it's quite nice. It's nice kind of more like remastering. And all the buttons work, these little buttons. Like, I, don't, I never really like this TARDIS, it's just so plain. Ugh, I don't. I just never really liked it. Then you got these little inset roundel doors, which I think was inspired by the Master's TARDIS that I showed you just now. It's just there's nothing just in this. There's nothing. There's not even, there's not even a chair or anything. It's just so plain. But I like the console. This is like my. This is like my favorite TARDIS console. Like if I were to build a real life TARDIS, console, I base it off of this. And then you can see this one's also quite tatty because again you only see it from like one side. So this is the secretary console interior. And you can see, go through a cloth. Because I, I think it was this, I think it started with this TARDIS, that they never had backs. Many Tom Baker TARDIS never had backs because you never saw the back, so they just never made it. It was just a bit of black curtain. So here is the secondary console interior. What a beautiful thing! Look at all the buttons. I'm pressing the buttons through the cabinet. How do I open the cabinet? There we go. As you can see, it's got all the little buttons inside. I love the scanner. Let me show you the scanner switch. So you press that. Look, it's really slow and staggered. And of course, that's the scanner window that it's inspired to make in pretty much the next two 
three TARDISes, they have the scanner and the wall. And you've also got all these extra bits. So I think it's also this one that opens up as well. So you've got the, you've got the boxes from uh, Robots of Death, which box is larger. You've got the paper he uses to write the little notes for in uh, Deadly Assassin. And also you can open the little door and open the uh, little console up itself. Which is nice. And I think this door opens as well, but it goes to a fake corridor. It's just cardboard, because... Budget! Also, you can hear the music loop. You can hear the hum. You have these lovely stained glass windows. Oh my god, look. Look at this one. Star Trek. That's the end of this TARDIS. How do I get out of that? How do I get out of here? How do I leave the the abyss behind the curtain? This is my favourite TARDIS in the mod. Oh, I love it. I love the doors already open as well. Close them with this. Okay, I'm not a big fan of the sound effects, but oh, I love this. This is like the first TARDIS. Oh, I love it. I love this TARDIS. This is like the first one that Cav looks Cav proper. Um, my great thing, my favorite thing is if you hit not that one, uh, the flight switch. If you notice the rotor, it wiggles a little bit as it goes up and down because of the axle it's on, which is nice. There's also an episode where like one of these red strips were broken and it was just like loose and like wobbling around. And the end has lots of little switches that you can flick. I think one of those do something. I'm pretty sure. I swear one of these do something. Is it this one? Yeah, get through to the ceiling. <laughs> this is a fun little uh, thing. Uh, interior scanners. Oh, that's a great thing. So if you have that and then flick this button, you've got an actual outside view. So that's just outside. There's a is that a crow. It's a big pixel. There's no interior. To this one. There's not got a, a further interior. Well, it has an interior, but not like um other rooms. Uh, but but this is this is the room that kind of sets the precedent for like every other TARDIS until the McGann, really. Because all the houses look pretty much like this. But yeah, look at the scanner. Look at that. I love that. I love that the bits. My favorite, one of my favorite things. Again, okay, I, don't, I don't know where the sounds come from, but they're there. Look at these things that mm, flicker. All right, let's open the doors again. Let's go outside. All right. So next bit, we're looking at the fifth doctor's tardises or fifth slash sixth slash seventh anyway this is from series 19 and series 20 i guess also series 18 because fourth doctor has this one as well so you have the uh the kind of modern tardis door noise then you have the biggest and really like unlit room like it's lit but unlit there's no like weird light there's no light this is gray um it's got all the controls and stuff humming. It's a really small console, so it looks, looks really tiny. And the room is absolutely massive. But it has got a great little additions. But if you go through this door, I ignore the you can hear the chime the hum switch over to the repeat. If you go through here and through this door, then down this corridor, past this chair bit, it's the zero room from a uh, Gastro Valva. Is there a there's one door you can open that has a little room in it, I think it's this one. Yeah. I thought the clicky noise of the door. But uh, yes, yeah, really. Yeah, there's a hat. There was a hat stand. I like this. I don't mind this room. I'm not a big fan. Of the, I mean, the console does change a bit, doesn't it? I don't mind the room. It's quite spacious, but mm, it doesn't click with me for some reason. It just doesn't click for whatever reason. Oh, and there's the little index file thing. It's just it's like a, there's like a typewriter with a golf ball on it. The next is probably the most polished one, which is uh, the fifth slash sixth slash seventh Doctor's TARDIS. Um, you can also uh, make the lamp a bit taller, and if you're a Happiness Patrol fan, you can make it pink. Because why wouldn't you want to make it pink? So the door, like again, like the other one, the door's already open, and you get the coolest. I love them. this is the like the best probably the best 80s TARDIS because I mean this, it's just so crisp and neat and also has a fantastic little bonus thing so not just has it also got a proper scanner like that it's got a proper little scanner screen but it also has this if I use if I take off using the D-mat switch I think this also has got an interior as well so I've got, got a few I think it's only just this corridor and there's a room there and if you can keep going this way, there's another room, and that's it. So this used to have a zero room, but the great thing is, also, if you open the scanner, you should have a vortex effect, which is nice. But the best thing is, okay, so let's let's land. Ah, 
Now listen to this. Wait, wait for it to land. That's a nice little materialization noise. I love this. It's a beautiful detail. Ding! So it's landed. I lo also I love the scanners. They're like really... They Actually, do they move when you're in flight? Hold on. Flick the flight button. Yeah, they like flick around. They used to be just uh, come, like images that's like, just like copied on. But they've kind of like been redone in HD. So they look, they look really crisp and neat. Look at that. And all the buttons have like labels and stuff on them as well. Beautiful. I love it. I love this. I love this console. It's such so beautiful. It's got the hat stand still as well. Uh, there's no other detail. I mean, this tower, this has had a few little extra bits. Like, um, there's a column base. I think it's a uh, Vengeance on Varos where they have this little like purple chair. And I think there's another episode where there's like where there's another column base where they have like a big like box and stuff. But this has got a few extra bonuses to it as well. If we leave, do you also have a master's interior, so it's the same police box, but it's got the mountain, but it's got the black interior, like what you see in Planet of Fire, and I think also in one of the Trial of the Time World episodes. It's just like the full, like, all black interior, which is nice. We have loads of bonus uh, interiors, bonus exteriors, so we'll quickly go through them. Alright, so here are some of the other interiors, so not all the, as you can see, not all these are for the master, like this one this is the uh, one uh, from uh, uh, Attack of the Cybermen. There are other ones from that. I think. I think there's also an organ, and I think there's also like there's like a set of gates as well. This is the only one they've got in this. What? Which ones? That's that's the door, the cabinet. I'm guessing it's just the cabinet. You, you've got. Uh, this is from. Oh, what episode is that from? I think this is from Deadly Assassin. There's the beach hut, which I don't know what that's meant to be from. It might be, I want to say Planet of Fire, or maybe the Trial of the Time of Sun, I'm not too sure. That's the Attack of Simon one. This is from Castro Valva. This is the Iron Maiden from uh, the King's Demons. And this is the San Pillar. I'm guessing this is from Planet of Fire. And this is the clock from Keeper of Charkin. Final, yeah, Final Classic TARDIS. Them again. This is the newest one, and it isn't finished, but it is probably the most crisp and detailed um, for the moment. So you can have different windows. I like the white windows. Because the only thing I don't like about the size is it has these like randomly frosted like windows. You can see it better in the black. But some are frosted, some aren't. I don't, it's just a really odd like pattern. I just don't really like it. But with the white windows, you don't really notice it as much. So we open the door with the sound effect Nick from Big Finish. Doors aren't like this, it's a work in progress. But look at how detailed this is. Look how beautiful it is. I love the noise, the wires coming out, the pillars. You've got the big kind of dome. You've got the uh, walkway up here. Look at all these controls that are all ever so nicely clipped. Let's go up. Minusa, Argolis, and Earth, and Gallifrey. I don't know Minusa. I know Argolis. That's from uh, Leisure Hive. With all these controls. You've got the flight. Which has that really weird wheezy flight noise. But yeah, there there is another Megan as well, but this is the most like nice quality. But of course, you can see it isn't finished; it's nowhere near finished. It's just a beautiful room, really. I could, I, I, I could. I, there's a spotlight here, but where's the spotlight coming from? Where's the light coming from? So that's all the uh, classic tasks is done. Now, onto the new series one.